Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Charlie Craven, and today I'm going to tie for you a uh, pattern from a good friend of mine, Andrew Grillos. And uh, this one is called a lowrider. Um, it's a, uh, a stonefly imitation, adult stone. Um, and you can tie it in golden or terra narcissus, but uh, uh, you know, obviously sits very low on the water. It's not a real high rider, um, but sits low and, and uh, is a pretty fun tie. And while it looks complicated, it's really not. Um, so I'm going to show you how to tie it. I'm pop that one out, and we're going to start with a, this is a TMCO 200, uh, 200R, and this this is a size 8. You can tie them in whatever size you like. Um, but I'm going to start with some 6 dot uni thread here in black, and I'm going to start my thread, oh, I don't know, 60% or so on the hook there. And I'm going to run back to where my thread is even with the point on the barb. Back that up just a little bit, about like so. Give you a little view of that. Um, and then we're going to take a little bit of, of uh, oh, ice dubbing or SLF prism dubbing. Um, you know, this is, this is a material that I normally wouldn't use for a dry, but Andrew uses it on this. I, I think it's a little porous. Um, so I would use something like Nature Spirit Emergence dubbing myself, but um, it's his fly, so we're going we're gonna to use some of this. Um, and this is kind of a rusty brown. Um, and I'm going to put this on and make just a little ball back here at the bend of the hook. And it's just occurred to me we don't have our microphone in the right place, so hopefully that'll be better. Let's see how that goes. Oh, well, yeah, that's going to be better. So then I'm going to take some tarantula legs, which are just medium round rubber legs um, with some barring on them. I'm going to take a single strand of, this is orange with brown bars, I think, I'm going to run my thread back up to, to where I started, and I'm going to tie this in at the center of its length. And I'm going to pull that far side back along the far side of the hook and wrap back over it right up to that nub of dubbing. And then I'll bump forward, and I'll do the same thing on the near side. And again, right up to that nub of dubbing. Um, you can kind of hold the two together and jam it up. And they should be fairly widespread. That's going to be a fairly widespread tail there. Um, this one on my near side is curving out a bit, and it's in my way, so I'm going to trim them now. You could, I usually trim them after the fact. All right, so now for the, uh, the shell back, I've got a piece of foam that is tapered um, up to about the gap of the hook. Um, and I don't need it quite that tapered. I'll give you a little better view there. Uh, so just a slight taper to it. And I'm going to start this. I'm going to run that thread back up to about 75%. And I'll start this piece of foam here, and I'm going to wrap back over it, trying to keep it on top of the hook all the way back to that dubbing ball. And then I'll just cross hatch it a couple of times to anchor that in. And you do want to make sure I pull that piece of foam forward, make sure that, that, uh, that there's no space between the dubbing and the foam. So now we're going to dub the abdomen, and it's that same dubbing. And I like to dub this fairly tight. Uh, we've got a lot of a lot of bulk already on the hook from the um, from the foam tie down, so it's not going to take a ton of dubbing to do this with any luck. But I want to dub that on fairly tightly, and I'll start this dubbing back here at the the base of the body, and I'm going to work forward with maybe just a slight bit of a taper as I get up here toward the front end. And I want to end just off the end of that, that foam tie down. So we've got our little shaggy body there like so. All right, now the cool part. Um, this is sort of Andrew's uh, trademark. Uh, I'm going to run that thread up to the hook eye and back again just to give me a nice thread base there. Got some wild strands in there. But I'm going to fold this piece of foam forward and I'm going to tie it down here just at the front edge of that dubbing. And then I'm going to just spiral wrap my thread back over the body, like so. Once I get to the back, I'm going to spiral it forward the other way, and I want to create X's along the center of the body here as I go. So I've cross-hatched the top of that body. So we've got a little segmentation and texture built in there. And I can trim that piece of foam out and 
anchor that down a bit. Now I like to create a little bit of a shelf here at the front end uh, for the wing we're about to put in. And I'm going to take some uh, Pearl Crystal Flash and um, I've got seven or eight pieces here. I'm going to tie this in at the center of its length and then fold that back for my underwing. And now for my overwing, I'm going to use a little bit of dyed orange cowell care. And I've stacked this up nice and neat, and you don't need a huge chunk here. And I'm going to measure this just back, just about to the end of the body, you know, the end of that dubbing ball. And I'm going to lay that hair in, and I'll take my thread and I'll spin it up. This is 6 out uni, so fairly strong thread, about 130 denier. I'm going to put two turns over it and flare that hair in place, tighten it up, tighten it up until it stops flaring. Then I'll lift those butt ends up, just little by little, and wrap through those to anchor that hair down in smaller increments. About like so. And then I want to get as many of those butt ends as I can in one swoop and trim those out. Um, and this will usually take a couple of tries to get all of them. Got one big one over here on your side. Thanks for letting me know. I thought we were a team. Like so. All right, now I'm going to run my thread right back up the base of that wing, and I'll kind of tuck one, one wrap of thread behind the other, just create myself a little bit of room here and anchor that wing right up to the front edge of the body. Now I'm going to come in and um, rather than just cut this flash off square, I like to cut a cut from the end at an angle. So I've got various lengths, so it's sort of ragged. You can kind of see what I've done there. So now I'm going to take a piece of foam uh, that's cut, again, about as wide as the gap of the hook. And you can see I've cut a notch in the end of it, cut a little V. Um, and what I want to do with this is I'm going to bump my thread right up to the base of the wing. I'm going to tie this in, kind of cup it over about halfway up the wing, and I'll tie it down right at the base of the wing with just two turns of thread. One, two. Just short little, little stub there on top. And then I'm going to take another strand of that tarantula egg, and I'm going to take here on, on my near side, I'm going to measure this about a shank length long. I'm going to tie it in on my near side in that same notch. Get a couple turns. Let me get it in here and then I'll turn this so you can see what I just did. I just tied that in on this side. And then I'm going to fold this front end back and catch it again on the far side. And I don't really worry about the exact positioning. That came out pretty square, um, but it doesn't usually. You know, that's not always the case. So um, you, can, you can reposition that as needed and you can actually reposition it later also. Um, then I'm going to take a strip of orange razor foam and I'm going to tie this down right on top of there as well. Just a little short stub sticking out here. Anchor that down with a couple turns like so. Now, um, the reason we left this in a loop here is this is going to kind of want to be in our way. Um, I can take that, let me cut that a little shorter. I could take that leg and pull it back and pull it back all the way back over the wing and that'll hold it out of the way um, while I complete the rest of this process, which thankfully is only dubbing. Uh, so from here, I'm going to take a little bit more of that dubbing. And again, I like this on here pretty tight. We're going to kind of build a shape and come down that taper with it. I'll fold that foam back out of the way. Um, and anytime you, you've got a hill, um, you want to dub up it. So I'm going to start the dubbing just behind the index point and run up that hill. Try not to catch that leg. Up that hill on the near side here. Right up to the base of that foam. Now I need just this pinch more dubbing here to get to the front without letting my thread show. I'm going to put that on, again, very tightly. 
kind of square that thorax off a bit. And then I want to end with bare thread here in our index point. And I can even make a little thread base right there. Now I'm going to fold my foam forward again and come around the hook and cinch that down. And I'll fold my, oh, not yet, because we're going to put our antenna in. Um, so now that I've tied that piece of foam down, I'm going to take another strand of tarantula legs. And the trick with this is to tie this in with sort of bad figure eight wraps, leaning forward. And at first they'll kind of sit almost straight off to the sides. We're going to fold our piece of orange foam forward here and tie it down in the same notch. And it's going to kind of pinch those legs, those rubber legs, a little more toward the front. Then I'll lift the butt ends here, bring my thread to the front, and I'll come up and whip finish just behind the hook eye. Trim my thread out of there, kind of reposition those legs a bit. I'm going to trim my orange foam short. I'm going to leave just a little bit longer nub on the cinnamon foam. I don't know that I mentioned that that was cinnamon foam earlier, but that's cinnamon colored foam. Uh, depending on which, uh, which distributor you get it from, it could be called root beer also. Root beer and cinnamon um, are the same color, just from two different distributors. So I trim those antennas a little shorter. And then I'm going to reach in back here and just pull this leg tight in this loop and cut it. And then I can sort of position those legs along the side of the fly like so. And I'll trim those to length as well. I, I find I like this fly with a little bit shorter legs. It's got a pretty wide profile. Um, so I like to keep it you know, a little on the short side with the legs like so. So it's not quite so gangly and obviously not a not a real bug. Um, we might clean up some of the slash. I got some of it a little long. But that is our Andrew Grillos Lowrider. One thing we'll we'll do is come in here and put a little shot of head cement on that thread head. Um, you can hit that little thread band where you tied your legs down. It's almost covered by dubbing. You can get a little shot in there that'll just kind of lock things down. I'll give you a little better focus here on the top. And then as we come back around the side. So that is Andrew's Lowrider. Um, pretty cool little fly, don't you think? Um, Andrew's got, gosh, a ton of cool foam stuff. Uh, really a creative tire. and been a good friend of mine for a long time. Um, I, I've always uh, always admired his stuff. So um, this, is a, this is a cool one. Um, we'll do a few more of his patterns, too, I think. He, uh, he's got some cool stuff. So no reason not to show that off as well. But um, that's Andrew Grillo's... Um, low rider little foam foam stone pattern um you know this could cross for a for a hopper um you could cross for a lot of stuff just general food uh sits a little lower on the water than a than a chub it might be a little bit harder to see although that orange piece on top um you know to that end the uh um one of the things that i've noticed is if you're fishing from a boat um flies that have orange tops are are pretty easy to see you know if you're uh wade fishing and you're looking at the fly you know head on this way makes it a little bit harder um, when you're looking down on top of it that orange shows up a lot better so um, you know wade fishing flies seem to be uh, if you've got something taller a little bit more profile to the wing seem to be a little easier to see but uh, you know you can make do um, you're young your eyes are still good quit complaining uh, twist some of these up put them in your box you'll have them for next spring when the uh, stoneflies roll around and uh, you'll probably be glad you did thanks for watching I'm Charlie Craven